okay, roll call. Ed Dorn. Here. You know, is excused. Jerry Rusko. Eric Rathers is present. And Ken Rubinsky. Present. Excellent. Thank you. All right. And the agenda is kind of weird. So I had to set it up the way the city does theirs. Um, so the next thing is the approval of the agenda. So if you look at your agenda, if you want to move anything around, um, if you don't want to talk about something, now would be the time that we could make that, or you could just recommend approval and do it. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Ready. Uh, in your packets for item D should be the approval of the minutes. Last time we met was about, well, three years ago, 2019, February 20th, 2019. Not, I would make a motion to approve if I was at that meeting. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? <laughs> If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Thank you. Okay. Now we're into regular business. Regular business. Okay. First <laughs> up, election of officers. Um, so the first one would be chairperson. Um, I would make a motion that we make Dale the chairperson, who's our previous chairperson. Uh, any other nominations? If not, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? There's none. So that passes. So let Dale know the good news. He has a streak <laughs> running. <laughs> That's what you get for not coming. That is the other chair. Okay, next up we have uh, Vice Chair. Mm -hmm. I think historically it's been one city, one town. Um, when they, I think they flip flopped. But um, well, anybody's interested in being a vice chair, nominate them. Doesn't have to be somebody from the city. Well, I think. I think Mr. Dorf thought that was a good idea. Rubinsky really yeah. appoint Eric at vice chair. <laughs> motion to appoint Eric as vice chair. All right, any other nominations? All right, thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed is nay, so I appreciate the vice chair. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess we go on to our next item, which is information of possible action of the request to amend the city of Bay's comp plan, property located at the 4800 block of Chancel Road, parcel number 22SC490, from commercial to light industrial, submitted by Seth Lenz of ICS Properties LLC. And on behalf of Joe Moore, so I guess I'll turn it over to you, gentlemen. And Seth is here in the audience, and Joe is online. Um, I put a quick PowerPoint together and Dave and I will probably just kind of tag team it and go through it really quick. Um, hopefully you can all hear. All right. Okay. And I zoom to it. All right. So this is a, a request for comprehensive plan amendment from a commercial future land use designation to an industrial land use designation. Uh, for the 4,000 block of Shampoo Road, north side of Shampoo Road. Um, this is the parcel itself. I can't remember. Let me grab the report. I don't remember the full acreage. Yep. Yep. I got 10.8 10 acres. Um, so it is located east of Highway 5457, south of Algoma Road. It's accessed via, is it Maloney? Maloney Road down to Shampoo and then Shampoo cul-de-sacs at the highway. Um, what you see here on this map is um, everything in gray is 
outside of the city limits um, oh. <laughs> and everything that's not in gray is, is the city. Uh, you'll see this little dashed line that circles around. So the, the process for any of these types of joint plan commission items, first it's gonna come to the joint plan commission for a recommendation. Um, that's gonna be forwarded to the city's plan commission. If it's in the town, it goes to the town plan commission. Um, they're gonna make a recommendation to the board or council. And then that's how the action goes. When it does get to the city, we didn't do that with the joint plan commission, but when it gets to the city, that yellow dashed line is the mailing. So we mail letters out to all the neighbors, um, letting them know that there's a request going on and what it is. We also would put a sign out on the site that a lot of people drive past. Um, so if you're wondering what that line is, that's what it is. So this is the site. This is just a little bit closer uh, view of the site. You can see Shampoo Road to the south. Um, again, 54, 57. Um, then with the, with the exit ramp to 54, um, Equestrian Road um, is really one of the only things developed in this block. Um, and there is Aurora Bay Care um, Clinic at the end of that cul-de-sac. Uh, when you get down to Shampoo Road, there's a single family home where you see it saying park and ride. This is from Google. Obviously they got that wrong. Um, there's a single family home here to the east and to the south across Shampoo Road. Uh, there's a mixture of uses down here. There's some singles. Um, there is a sign company um, and wholesale uh, agricultural uh, Tillman landscaping, landscape company. So again, when you look at the, well, let me go down. This is the city's comprehensive plan, um, which is what's being requested to be amended. So you can see in the city portion of the joint planning area, it is designated for commercial uses. Um, this purple is business park, which is uh, consistent with the zoning. You'll see that in a second. Um, do not have the town's uh, future land use on here, but I believe it is in the packet that the petitioner had given you, and we can we can touch upon that. Uh, but it shows this area being residential in the long range plan for the town. All right. So this circle kind of shows the area that we're looking. This is the town of Scott zoning, uh, different than the future comprehensive land use, which is what the goal is, at least according to the town board or the city council, what they want to see these properties used for. So staff is almost always going to look at that future land use plan uh, when anybody comes to request a zoning change, um, typically. Um, but the zoning in the town right now, you have some ag for Tillman's business and then single or low density residential and a little bit uh, in the back of those businesses um, I believe is rural residential which in the in the city is a holding zone um, and a conservation zone typically um, and this is the city's zoning which is a little bit different Zoning itself is rural residential for us, but we have a planned unit development overlay over the top. So back, I think this was, was this 05 that this was adopted? So when the Joint Plan Commission and the boundary agreement between the city and the town went into place, um, the property owners, the planners at the time, Dave was here at, the, at that time, uh, Bill Lockery was with the city, um, kind of went through the entire area, laid out what land uses, what zoning was appropriate, or felt to be appropriate at the time, and they kind of laid it out here. The other things you'll see on this map are the dashed lines, which I think came later, but that is officially mapped roadways, um, or future roads, anticipated future roads. But again, dashed circle is sort of the area that we're looking at, and what you'll see is that in the zoning, um, it shows it as mixed use zoning. And you may ask, what is mixed use? Um, oops. Jesus, it's sensitive. Not, and these are also in your packets or on your on your tables. I'm sorry, Ken, you probably don't have that. Um, but there's two use tables here. So this comes out of the zoning. On the left side is principal uses allowed in industrial districts. Um, on the right side are principal uses allowed in the mixed use districts. And I'm not gonna go through all of them, but when you kind of look at even just the headings, uh, so in the mixed use district, which is zoned now, um, it allows dwellings, mostly by uh, council approval, so homes, 
uh, educational uses, public service uses, office uses, commercial uses, service uh, and retail businesses, commercial rec, uh, and vehicle services. So vehicle services are usually car washes, gas stations, uh, that kind of thing. That's everything that's permitted in the mixed use district. Um, in the industrial district, you'll kind of see those headings and they're a little bit harder to see, but much more geared toward production and processing. Um, some of the things you'll see with both of these districts, um, the uses are kind of geared towards traffic, geared towards what's going around them, um, what uses are around them and compatibility with future land uses, uh, generally from the comp plan. So I point this out and I bring it up because it is significant um, in that we have a request and Seth is here to um, talk about what he wants to propose, what his proposal is. But again, his proposal isn't zoning. So once the comp plan or if the comp plan is changed from a mixed use to an industrial, it will then set it up to be rezoned for industrial. That rezoning then would allow you to have any uses that are there. Um, so, you know, whether Seth puts it in right away, he's, he's, that's the use that would be there. If you were to sell the property, you could have any of the other industrial uses that could go in there once it's rezoned. Um, or let's say Seth puts his buildings up and in five years, the sign is going to sell them off. The next person to buy it says, great frontage. I want to put a, I hate to always say this, but a concrete match. Um, so keep that in mind when you look at the, at the land use designation change. It's not what's being requested right now. It's what is allowed in that area. Um, Where we started in 2003 about looking at what was concerning what would be what's the long term thing. So I concept what we saying what's the long term nothing's happening with the first 2003. As time goes, just like I'll go back and I can make sure we keep looking at it. But the plan that we laid in place, I think, are still valid today, even though they're not valid in the house. You know, what, what do we want on this side of the highway and on both sides? And then the steps, as David outlined, what we do here today is advisory to the city plan commission. So it's, it's that list of what is this, what is this consideration do as far as the long term? Not just the applicant, but the Right. And, and to that point, so this is uh, what was produced, I think it was 2005. I can't remember. Um, right. So this is kind of what produced what you see on this map is is again it's the it's the city portion of the extraterritorial um, area, the joint planning area. So the pink colors on that map represent a commercial zoning, obviously all along the highway, um, and then kind of along striking Algoma Algoma Boulevard, Algoma Road. Um, dark purple is industrial. Yellow that you see in there is basically environmentally sensitive areas that can be developed. Um, and then that uh, mixed use is the orange. Um, typically what you would see is you'd see some that say residential, you'd see some that say um, commercial. Um, in this case, I believe when that went through, both uses were permitted in that mixed use from nature and it provided a lot of flexibility. So Dave, you can probably comment on this a lot better than I can, um, but, most of the property owners in this area kind of set up what they want, what they envision for their land, and then if it made sense for the planning staff, and then obviously the, both the town and the city who it, this went through. Um, so uh, when we looked at this 
comp plan change, we sort of looked at that parcel that circled, um, a change of that to industrial, which again would be the purple. Um, for one, it would be a spot change. So you are not connected to any other industrial properties. Um, uses that are permitted in the commercial districts and the mixed use districts, commercial in this case would be most important because it's as you're going up Maloney Road up to Algoma and then down Algoma, that's what you're going to see as commercial. Um, we both felt, city and town staff felt that, that potential uses in the industrial district could be very incompatible with future development of commercial zone and commercial land use. Um, we also felt that that frontage um, along the highway and along the off ramp, especially, provides great visibility for an active drive by type business, office building, something that needs that highway access. I'm not saying that industrial users don't, um, but that's usually prime commercial property. Um, again, the economy after 07 kind of took the tank. Um, we don't know where that's going to necessarily go in the future. Um, so that was another factor in our in our consideration, um, and then again, just the potential other uses could that could go there. Um, the last thing we kind of talked about and looked at was also, and not really a topic for this <laughs> for this forum, um, but water and other utilities are extremely limited in this joint planning area. This site is actually serviced by water, so that blue line that you see right here is actually a water line. Um, so most of this other commercial area, industrial area, there isn't any water service. Um, this area there is. Um, so if any has the potential to be a catalyst for University Heights Commerce Center to be uh, jump-started, it's where you have the utility. Um, some industrial users are going to use utilities, some aren't going to. Um, they may not need sanitary, they may not need water. Um, and so it might be uh, this disadvantage or not advantageous for this to not be utilized. The only investment in the water line not being actually used. Um, so kind of for those considerations, when we had looked at that, um, I think the main was really the incompatibility of potential uses next to other uses, not just in the city, but also in the town. Um, as I had mentioned, the comp plan is for the town is residential. Um, and then in the city, it's primarily commercial in this area with a little bit of mixed use um, kind of to the south. So um, this is the conceptual plans. And I think you have a copy on your, on your, um, in your packets or on your table. Um, again, this is the proposal that the uh, developer is considering. Um, and so I, I did want to highlight this, and he, he will, I'm sure we'll talk about it. Um, basically, looks like mini and maxi storage units, um, quite a few of them. Um, there is a creek running along the north side of the property. Looks like he has his, his attention next to that. Um, and then you can kind of get a look of what those buildings would be. But again, when I say all this, it's not really what's being proposed right here. It's what that zoning would allow at least in, in our discussions. So with that, um, both Tom Scott and the City of Green Bay staff are recommending denial of the compound change. And, My guess would be uh, uh, people And we also have Joe Moore on line too. So there's another person. Uh, how long do you want to stop live? Thank you for taking the time to be part of the meeting. I'm not a very good public speaker. So if you bear with me, I'm going to be quite a bit. I'm not very good at this. Um, I'm proposing a development of a South Front facility which is only allowed in light industrial zone districts to take additional use permit. This light industrial zone is already established within the University of Heights. This will be 
will not be a drastic change in your comprehensive plan, and with this crunch only being 10 acres, will not have a dramatic change to the percent of land use between the three current types of building units within the university site, which are commercial, light industrial, and mixed use. The fact that this is adjacent to Tillman's Wholesale and other multi unit commercial properties makes this a good fit for this parcel. And with light industrial mill nearby, it isn't that big of a change. Also, the town of Scott, uh, people the town of Scott have to react. Okay, so the two maps that I provided is one is the future, one is the uh, and the town of Scott originally had those adjacent parcels in residential and the future yet land use plan. Back in 2005, this use made good sense for this parcel due to the nearby residential zoning. But since then, town of Scott has had those parcels rezoned to commercial to accommodate the new multi unit commercial properties that now exist, which you can see on these maps. Since down in the lower corner, I kind of circled them, all those residential and now it's not commercial. Uh, the woods in the creek create a nice buffer between the parcels to the north, and self storage creates a very low impact on communities and infrastructure. With the low traffic counts, it would not have a detrimental effect to traffic on detrimental effect traffic wise to properties adjacent or properties to the east, thus actually being a good low impact transition to other proposed uses in university sites. Heavy traffic and large equipment are already being used by someone's landscape on this roadway. My development will not use any large equipment on this road once completed. Studies have proven that self storage creates very low, very low traffic counts. And please keep in mind, apartments are a conditional use in current mixed use, current mixed use districts. Apartments create very high traffic counts and have large impacts on communities and infrastructure. I've also provided a uh, traffic count, it's more of a generic one. This kind of gives you an idea, a uh, general idea of how many. Per peak people coming in out of the land compared to other other businesses nearby. The ones that are built are the mini store, and the yellow is what's what can be used currently in this use. And some of those are built at some of them are per unit, some of them are per square footage. So the number two there just actually helps me to look at it. The current owner has had this parcel for sale for 30 years. It has been competitively placed during that time. There was even a tip available for developers, for developers that they could take advantage of for a little incentive. That has since expired. There are also a couple of challenges along with this parcel. First, there are some environmentally sensitive areas along the creek and the north boundary line. So this limits how much of a parcel is actually buildable. I sat down with my own associates and Concluded with, with that you will be able to do what we are proposing on this site. So there's no worry about purchasing it and then not being able to do what I say. Second is the sewer. Can you please pull up the uh, the water line on the first? Sure. Uh, as David explained, the water is currently there. So the second problem with this parcel is the sewer. The sewer currently runs along Maloney Road and turns and runs down College Park Drive. It does not go under that creek and it doesn't go up to Shampoo Road. The location of that sewer can be seen on this map. You can see the green, how it turns and goes up towards the other industrial area, and it doesn't turn and go towards this one. The cost for that needed sewer has been the biggest reason why nobody has purchased this parcel to develop it with its current zone. The estimated cost to bring that sewer to the property line is over $400,000. My proposed development would not need that sewer to operate. Just like other businesses working to 16, I, I would too like to have the opportunity to have that extremely high visible frontage of highway usage. I feel that any type of development of business should have the opportunity for that highway exposure if available to them. Another thing to consider is increased tax revenue. There's currently a 
special assessment of $150,000 on this parcel that will be paid in full when the land is sold. And with my proposed development having a completed project cost of around $2 million, it will increase tax revenue for both the state and the city. As I read through the package of blind to be in there, I noticed there's wording along the lines of may create and which could and other concerns about this about what could be developed here. I understand there are always concerns when it comes to requests like this, and those concerns should not be overlooked. But at the same time, those same concerns do not overshadow the information and facts supported for a development like this that doesn't present any of those issues. This parcel has been for sale with a mixed use building for many years with no projects proposed to the city. The risk of other light industrial uses on this property is low due to the high cost involved with the new sewer for those types of development. Just like the challenges presented now with the current mixed use building, the same, would be, same thing would happen if other industrial possibilities there without sewer, without the sewer, without the run of business without a sewer. And the cost is it's not cost effective for these guys or for those kind of companies to run. I'm the first person to write an offer on this parcel. I would not be using this parcel for anything but self storage development and have no plans of ever selling it if it's approved. I have a very good, I have, I have a very good history with the city of Cleveland and other projects of delivering what has been proposed and meeting or exceeding expectations. My, off, my offer has been accepted on this parcel. All the financing is set up and ready to go. In closing, both the city of Green Bay and the top town of Scott recently have made changes to other areas of the comprehensive plan to adapt to different city and town rooms. This is a good opportunity to take a look at this parcel and see if possible changes are appropriate for this situation. I hope you agree and consider, consider recommending approval. Thank you. Um, do want to Well, I do want to make one more point. I don't know if you saw that you have your email up. The neighbors on Shampoo Road sent an email this afternoon, um, and it was Doris and yep. Um, they sent immediately to the east. Um, so I'm assuming I didn't verify, but I'm assuming this is correct. Be this property owner right here. But look, <laughs> it's labeled park and ride. Um, they sent an email that said they have um, would be most impacted and they are in favor of the fraud. Are in favor. Pardon me? They are in favor. They are. Yes. Was Joe, Joe, are you going to talk? Sorry, oh, you're muted, Joe. All right. Thank you. Um, Hey, thanks for uh, stepping up and being a part of the committee here. <laughs> I've, I've been on that side of the desk and I know sometimes these are hard because these projects come before and they're writing, you know, a bird in the hand. And, uh, but you do have to think about the future here. So I understand the reasoning, um, you know, for the recommendation of denial on this change. Um, but I, I want to speak to a few points. Um, I obviously do support this. I represent the sellers. The listing is mine. Um, I would like to certainly sell this project, but I want to tell you my experiences uh, over the last three years that I've had it listed. I have had a apartment builder uh, that had approached me. He wanted to put a planning option in place and we needed to get a quote on the cost of bringing sewer in. Um, on the corner of Doris and Frank Corey's or the park and ride house, uh, to get sewer just to that corner, um, uh, I guess it would be the corner of the red, the red box. Yep, right there. The cost that uh, Director Grenier had given us was $410,000. Uh, that did not extend into the lot at all where the multifamily units would have gone. Um, he had suggested a couple of different options like a gravity uh, type septic system that could tie into the main. Uh, it added tens of thousands of dollars to the cost beyond that. And my apartment uh, person, he walked away. He just said that it, it just wouldn't make it worth it anymore having to foot that cost to bring that in. Um, I know the city had been approached, uh, gosh, uh, before the, the director, before Director Vonk was even here, uh, and also to Director Vonk um, about the sewer pay, uh, being paid by the city. 
and having the city bring that in, raising the land values, and then, and then letting us market that at a higher cost as a fully improved parcel um, that, you know, the city just, just doesn't have the money to do a project like that. Uh, even back then when the cost was probably closer to a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, the only other project that I've had um, any interest in here other than uh, Seth's proposal uh, was a carpentry company who wanted to build a small uh, finishing shop on that small parcel uh, next to the uh, Corey's house on the corner uh, where it's divided by the trees. And then he wanted to supplement his income by renting out the rest of the parcel for cornfield, um, which that wasn't going to work as well. Again, no sewer uh, made him walk away from that one as well. So that has been the interest in, in the three years I've had it. Seidel and Associates, um, my broker has had this, the, the listing that is active right now has been active since July of 2007. And we've marketed this on multiple national sites, um, of course, in all the local um, multiple service listings, even in the residential multi multiple service listings, seeing if we may be able to attract a developer to come in and, and put up subdivision style housing. Uh, we've had not a single bite on, on any of that. So that's just kind of a brief history of it. Um, the people who own it now inherited it from their parents in 1995. They've had it for sale since then. And it was for sale prior to that as well. Uh, I also wanna bring just August 1st, 2005, I actually found the newspaper article on the 424 acres on Northeast side of Green Bay. And it had called for large box retailers, department stores, grocery stores, hotels, restaurants, financial institutions, convenience stores targeted for University Heights Commerce Center. Uh, what we have is that uh, smaller Aurora um, office and there is uh, what WS packaging um, further up Algoma Road and then further up another industrial uh, property, 36,000 square foot building there, which has a assessment of $1.7 million on nine acres, uh, very comparable to what this would be um, on nine acres too. So the valuations on a per acre average actually work for Seth's product project for what he's looking to do whether it's determined that this is highest or best use or not, it, it does fit um, with what we have historically. Um, when I was getting the numbers from Director Grenier on the sewer, uh, right around that same time, a letter was mailed out. This would have been on August 10th of 2021. A letter was mailed out to the neighbors notifying them of an informational meeting scheduled for August 18th at 5 p.m. for property owners um, of the University of Heights Commerce Center uh, for a commercial and retail market study uh, that was to be conducted by Mr. Buck and Ms. Townsend, uh, Ms. Wendy Townsend. Um, some informational updates by Director Grenier and community and economic development updates and some closing remarks. So um, I had inquired with Mr. Buck on what that was about and what that meeting was, you know, why that meeting was taking place. And uh, basically I was told was that the uh, entire master plan, the entire comprehensive plan that is there uh, was going to be reviewed and potentially amended um, by the city of Green Bay because when it was first designed, big box retail was a significant goal. However, so many businesses are away from the big box now uh, that doesn't make sense. And the comp plan as it's laid out and what it was designed for no longer makes sense. Um, as a fact, a matter of fact, in those discussions, um, he had said, well, we're looking to do a scale of uh, a scale, a mix of multifamily housing light industrial and some commercial office space. So that would have been um, August 31st uh, was when we had that conversation. Again, the $410,000 for the sewer is, seems to be what has really killed anything over here, uh, but not even getting calls um, on the property from people who don't know there's no sewer, that's a little bit disheartening as well. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna be cognizant of your time, so I'm just gonna wrap it up with a couple of things here real quick, but. Um, Considering the location, uh, and I, I'm, I apologize if I repeat a little bit of what Seth said, because I did share this um, with him today, and I may duplicate a little bit, but uh, Maloney and Champo Road are both dead end roads. Uh, the only access to this site would be from Highway 54, and that does uh, avoid really any kind of a high density like residential areas. So any kind of traffic, light pollution, any of those types of things would not be issues with this property. Uh, the stream, the wetlands, uh, you can see from this photo on that north side that uh, that is mature forest, mature tree growth throughout there. 
If you are standing on Champo Road and you're looking to Aurora Bay Settlement, you can see it in the winter when the leaves are gone. You cannot see it in the spring and summer when the trees are there. So uh, there's also a, a very big um, elevation on that backside. It drops off quite a bit on the north side to Aurora Bay Care. So along Equestrian Road, any future development there uh, will be shielded from this. So though it will be uh, a spot zoning, it's not like it's flowing into something next to it that is going to uh, really throw it off uh, and, and just really not make sense. Uh, the one residents abutting the property, Frank and Doris, uh, they have reached out to me and they do support the project. Um, again, they support this project, but you know, if Santa Max was building there, they probably wouldn't support that. So again, I understand your concerns about what could happen 20, 30, 50, 100 years from now. Um, and then the businesses on Champo Road, they are a wholesale nursery. They have semis parked uh, there today. I was there today. Um, Bay Petro and then Image Advantage signs. I mean, these are um, there's businesses already there. I mean, this seems like, like what you would find in an industrial park, in a business park, where you do see um, multi-storage. Um, and then as far as from a financial side, which I understand is not, you're looking at the comp plan, you're not looking at the financial side of things. But uh, again, the past due assessment of $150,000 owed by the current owners would be paid with the sale of the property. Um, I understand that that doesn't really matter a whole lot probably for the town of Scott, but for the city of Green Bay, a $150,000 past due bill being paid uh, would have a significant effect for them. Um, the 10 acres does not have sewer and due to the stream and the elevations, the cost is excessive. Uh, that's helped cause a, um, uh, the assessment here on this 10 acres is like $20,700. The city is bringing in about $203 a year in tax revenue. And Seth's proposal is a two to two and a half million dollar development. He's not asking for any TIF. He's not asking for any financial assistance from the city. He's asking for a comp cha change and then a zoning change so that he can just come in and build his project. So uh, that said, I'm, I'm supportive of it. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about it. This time, I think we'll start some discussion and questions from staff. Um, so I just have a, I guess, a couple quick comments. You know, I, I think it is important to be cognizant of, of what the long-term plans are and what this site can be, um, especially when sewer gets to this site. Now, I, I'm assuming long-term this is going to get sewer at some point. So it's going to be a fully service. Correct. I, I believe so, yes. Um, so I think it is important to be cognizant of that. But one question overall, just from our, our plan perspective, you know, and I've been here a long time, and we do have a lot of commercial zoning in this area. Do we feel we're going to see all that commercial? Because it is valid, the big box. I think that era has gone to, to at least the degree it was before. And we probably don't have the residential development occurring in this area to support commercial development of significance anytime soon. And so the city a long time to get festival in where it is and things like that. So I guess any thoughts from staff on long term is commercial the right play for this location? Well and that's great because I was hoping somebody could prompt me. Joe had mentioned that we had a conversation, I don't remember when, but at the end of last year, uh Wendy Townsend is our economic development director and myself did try to convene well, she actually did, but tried to convene a meeting of property owners um, to talk about this future um, land use plan. So again, as city staff, basically, it's what the council adopts is what we promote. I mean, we don't arbitrarily change the council's decisions. Um, so we wanted to meet with those property owners to say, hey, commercials, exactly what you would say commercial may not be the best use out here let's look at a comprehensive redo of the uh, university heights commerce center um what we so joe is definitely correct with that and i don't believe personally that big box commercial is going to work 100 percent there i feel a mix of, of multi some light industrial and still some commercial um would be best however not an incremental piece by piece basis so what we're working off now is a council adopted future land use. Um, so 
start cutting pieces out and putting in potentially incompatible uses um, is where it, it's just poor planning 101. Um, so, I mean, if this whole area were to be looked at, which is what we attempted to do, and I believe at that meeting we had two property owners that showed up. I wasn't there, but Wendy had said I think there was two. Um, quite a few town representatives, but uh, and I believe the, the meeting broke down quickly from land use to utilities. Um, again, I wasn't there, but that's what I understand. Um, but that was really the initial thoughts is let's look at this whole area and see how it can be comprehensively redone and make it marketable. Um, we still have the intent to continue to do that. We're actually going to be starting our entire compound redo um, next year. So the entire city. Okay. Now, just uh, quick things that I don't want to hog time. So, other commissioners to speak. But, if you, if you, you know, a, a big thing for me is, you know, we come up with these plans. And we've got neighborhood input. Now it is good to hear the adjacent neighbors in favor, but before I like to make a change, I'd really like to know what the rest of the neighbors feel. I think, I think it's important because if they've made decisions to locate based on the land use, and now we come in and change it, and they're not familiar with it, that always makes me nervous. Um, the second thing, if we were to look at a long-term plan change to where maybe there is some light industrial, would this be something that would fit in that scenario? If that's the case, would this be something that we should hold in? These comments and your comments together send the two of you know what makes it a good We built the same decision. And we invited everybody, and I think anybody did it. And we we have we have a great deal to segment so many people are interested. So we would have Owners that ran from Dave, I'm sorry to interject, but I, I cannot hear who's speaking right now. Right. Um, this is, sorry, I'm on the edge of the screen probably. This is Dave Kearney. I'm the planner for the town of Scott. And I'll, okay, I'll, thank you. That's better. I can hear you now. Okay. I'm going to turn up the volume. I don't think that works with the speaker, but. I was saying is when we start the process for joint planning, we did invite all of the neighbors. We had all the neighbors input, all of the property owners. And that's what joint planning, the joint planning commission used when we put together this map. So when we're looking at uh, where did the roads go, what did the future land uses look like, it was because of that community input. This body, even though there's only been a few changes, this body being advisory has worked off of that initial input. When we say a simple example of Aurora Clinic, that proposal fit right into a commercial zone that had already been discussed in the neighborhood. So that did make that, that planning step a little bit easier. When it goes to the future, I think it's always a dangerous thing. Your question would be a dangerous thing for Dave and I to try to answer on the floor to say, would the rewrite of, of this joint planning area land use, would it fit many warehouses in this location? That would be us, um, us speculating without the input of the neighbors. So how we put this plan together. So um, to address Mr. Lenz's comment, um, what's in a small, um, again in a small scope of what's happened here, um, there have been some land use changes. So the two businesses that have their um, their buildings next to Tillman was looked at as a, almost like a buffer property. When we usually looked at residential, it was because the water line went in and agricultural, leaving it agricultural, would have meant you could have cattle in farms. So it was, it was a, that was an incremental step to, a, to address the homes in the area. Um, I guess really, as far as trying to get to the point, the question is, opinion is following what joint planning has set up. Going beyond that and into speculation of what would a future plan look like, I wouldn't want to go there. Just because it would be, it would be us, us usurping our power over, over the Dave said he, 
it's been like I have to do is we follow the leadership's adopted plan and adopted direction. So, and I, and I think if the whole area was to look at and this would shake out as something we would, we would, you know, we would support that going up whatever point. But as David said, right now we have to go over what our elected officials have told us they want to see. And then in this case, what the neighbors wanted or the landowners wanted them to set up. Oh, I, and I think again, that's, that. it's that's, a long time ago, but it yeah. is. And it's, I do feel that is important. We, Dave showed the picture of how um, when it goes to be your plan commission. When this goes to the plan commission, then they send out a notice um, right. that would affect um, town of Scott residents. Well, yeah, this one shows it. So, and, and actually, a lot more town residents would be notified than city land. Um, but what we would typically do as procedural is we would send it all to the city people and send it to Dave to send out to the What happened to the rezoning? All right, so in this case, in that, in that notification policy, we do public notice in paper, which is required by statute, um, and class one notice and, and all of that. Um, it's our plan commission's policy that we send out letters to every property owner within 400 feet, which is not a lot out here, but it's pretty big when you're in, you know, downtown. Um, in actuality, we would send it to the town, and it's up to the town to decide how they want to share that. We don't have any jurisdiction over what, what your process is. And I know um, you don't have but in this situation, I guess the biggest concern is because it's spot zoning. So the, the comp plan change would set it up for a spot zoning. And again, with that, being that you work for municipality, you kind of understand probably more that the, the spot zones are rough because uh, there's not decent transitions. Sometimes we have out of land usage. Um, I mean, I kind of use the analogy sometimes is you get the subdivision that goes out in the middle of a farm field and the farmer is the worst person in the world. Well, they've been there since 1850. Um, that's just the incompatibility of two land uses together. It's too dense next to something that's too A. Um, neither are bad. It's just when they're together, causes issues. And that's typically what us planners try to not. Just under seven of it is going to be covered in concrete uh, impervious surface uh, concerns for runoff and such. Is that going to um, This is still just very conceptual. Anything, if the, if the comp plan were to be changed, it would allow um, to have to come forward, even come forward that for a, a don't change anyway. Um, but we would definitely not support it. Um, if we were to change to industrial comp plan, then we could support the, the zone change. Um, at that point, then he would submit his building permits, his application to site plan, the engineers would look at what's going on. But all the all the city requirements would be upheld at that point. And in this one, you know, obviously there's a lot of ESAs out here, environmentally sensitive areas. Um, you know, they would look at that as well. And Seth probably hasn't gotten that deep into it either. So the pavement might not actually be where it is. Or, you know, it's a foot buffer from them, or whatever. Dave, Dave, would you be able to repeat that question? I or turn the microphone towards who's speaking, maybe. Uh, I don't have a microphone. <laughs> it's on the computer somewhere. So the question was: Has the has the conceptual site plan um, 
been looked at as far as uh, impact on stormwater, utilities, and, and those type of things. And then I don't know if you heard the answer, but the answer the answer was um, this is still very conceptual at this point. It has not gone through those reviews, and it's a sixty or seventy percent. It's a conceptual to give the joint plan commission um, an idea of how it could be developed. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions, discussion items? Um, I have a question for city staff. Uh, Dave, I, I know we were talking about the sewer lines here. Um, has there been any further talk with, between Town of Scott and Green Bay, how that's gonna pan out or if there's any money with, you know, as far as the new like ARPA dollars that are coming out that could work towards this? Is that something that's even eligible? I'm just, I'm, you know, with new funds that are coming available, um, is that something that could be considered for making this land more developable for a higher and better use? Um, I don't know the conditions on the ARPA funds themselves. I mean, obviously the community could um, bond for the money if they have the bond rating. I'm not sure um, what our anticipation had always been was to get a catalyst there there used to be a tax increment financing district over most of this property i think almost all of it um and the the thought process was like we do when we do our tiffs um, is you get a catalyst project so something that comes in that builds a lot of increment and then the city at that point would borrow the money versus that increased tax base to pay for the utilities um, and then they could pay back that borrowing over the 27 year life of the tax increment district. Um, in this case, they held it open. I think they, I believe they closed it two years ago. Um, there had been no uh, increment. It was actually in the red. And so the city was paying, um, I can't remember how much it was, but they were paying fees every year and interest every year. Um, it was a, It was sort of a bleeding tid for lack of a better term, it's very far in the red. So they borrowed money from one of the other TIDs to pay it off and then they closed it. So if a catalyst project were to come in, at that point, they could do the analysis on the numbers and see if that increment would help pay for the uh, infrastructure. And that's, and that's a good point is to make as well because typically uh, a large industrial user, depending who it is, may need upgraded roads um, and, as well as other utilities. So, um, but that is a city council decision and uh, and town board decision and way above my pay grade. From the town's perspective, we've been asking and researching some of the same questions about <coughs> how can the federal money be used? There are still some questions out there because this is a rather new program with the new money coming out. And we are also interested in having the same conversations with the city. Um, and I can't say that those discussions are based on this particular parcel, but definitely improving utilities in the town. And, and because of our sawtooth border with the city, um, one will benefit the other, with, I think, with um, proper improvements. So um, we're working on it. I don't have an answer for this at this point. I want to ask. Uh, just to just to review something, so I'm clear. Uh, if this board were to approve the request, it still goes to the city then. Uh, open it to the city council. Uh, yep, through the plan. Through the plan commission. Okay. So the recommendation of the joint plan commission go to the city plan. City plan commission. And that would also be sent on to the council, so they know what the joint plan body. And what the town is interested So, there are a lot of questions. I guess, you know, one of the things with our joint plan commission is to make sure that the city and the town are working together so we get the development we want to see out here. Um, you know, one of the challenges is I think we all thought this was going to develop a lot sooner, and, and there, you know, we wouldn't be sitting here today discussing something you know, 10 years later and trying to figure out how to get things moving. Um, you know, I, I think from the city's perspective, they probably want to see a higher end development. I think it's, it's 
it's highway frontage on a very busy highway and it's directly off the interchange. So I'm guessing that's probably driving some of the thought process here. We also do have our, our plan put in place. Um, I really appreciate Seth and Joel coming forward. I, I think it's very good uh, ideas. And, and of course, I, I just don't know if this is the right location at least at this time. My recommendation, and I'm, I'm going to pull out Make, make a recommendation that we, we deny the request um, based on the spot zoning. You know, maybe we as a commission need to look at the zoning in general out here in the land use again to revisit. We really want all this commercial, we want more mixed use, more like industrial. But I think in light that we've got both uh, plan commissions, planners recommending against it to get our town and our city to fit together. In fact, that this is very high visibility land use along a major interstate. Uh, air Separated highway facility. I guess I'm going to move forward that we can I make a little change. Is there a second or any further? If, I, I would second that motion. I, I agree with you. All right. Before we make a vote, any further discussion on that? Otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll, all those in favor. One thing I see Joe has his hand up. I mean, we're not oh. opening the floor, closing the floor, but if you wanted to, to uh, get his comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Buck, I appreciate that. Um, when you were talking about a catalyst um, project and the TIF earlier, it just kind of spurred something in my head that I just thought I would, I would share real quickly because it reminded me of something in the conversation you and I had. Um, you know, a big part of the lack of development on this property is that a lot of this property is privately owned and, you know, anybody who's got land wants a top dollar and premium dollar for it, but they're looking at $65,000, $70,000 an acre or more in some cases. And it's just not causing anybody, anybody to come in. Um, approval on this project kicks out a 10 acre parcel at $35,000 an acre. It gives you an opportunity to go to these landowners and say, this is what the land is worth. This is what it sold for. Um, this is a project that's now in here. Uh, if this was a residential development, and I'm sure you've all dealt with residential developments, when, um, you know, let's just, uh, I'll throw out like costs, you know, when they develop an area, they will sell a few lots to builders for super cheap, or even just bring in their own builder uh, and give them a lot for free, just to get people in, putting shovels in dirt and getting some activity going, because that brings, uh, you know, the additional people in. And this could be one of those projects. It is high visibility, but it's not easy access. And again, not everybody knows there isn't sewer there and I'm still not getting calls on it. So even as a fully serviced uh, parcel of land, it has not been a, a popular or in demand. Um, I did have a brief conversation with former mayor Jim Schmidt about this because although in 2007, the economy tanked, I would say from 2010 to 2018, was probably the most growth that the city of Green Bay has ever seen. And really in our region, so much, hundreds of millions of dollars of developments went into our region. Um, at that time, uh, the mayor and the economic development team tried to push development into this, this area because everything was so hot for us and people just would not go. So again, if we have comps, now we can go to these people and say, you gotta come down on your price if you wanna sell it. And having shovels in the ground maybe brings more people to the table. So I just wanted to kind of bring that forward. And I would probably share that with the council, you know, when it gets to the floor in a couple of weeks, regardless of decision, I just, I, I just want to make sure that we have that kind of a vision and that kind of a pro thought process as well. Yes, this is one project that we're kind of questioning, but what could it possibly spur? Thank you. Arrive where they are. Uh, when I came in or coming in today, I was looking for a lot of the questions that were answered regarding the, the history of this piece of property, uh, the interest in it, uh, the potential, and, and, and obviously the potential is very high. But then again, I look back what interest has been shown, and it has essentially been sitting fallow for quite a while, unimproved. Uh, you know, I, I'm more inclined to say to grant it. Uh, this isn't uh, black and white, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I guess if there's not any further discussion, uh, 
I'll take a vote on, on the denial of the request. So all those in favor of the not denial, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. All right, so as of now, it, it, you know, we have denied it. Um, and again, Seth and Joy, I really appreciate you coming in. Um, you know, you, you did give us a lot to think about. I think for me, it's a high visibility site. I think that makes it a challenge in knowing that there's some concern at this spot. But as you heard, there are those who also are it's all good. Thank you. And I'm sorry we didn't go here. The next thing, and I think we probably covered a lot of this in our discussion here, but we wanted to add on since um, two new members that are here tonight, uh, Ken and Ed, we want to kind of go over the background of the Joint Planning Commission and the Joint Planning Area. Uh, Dave knows the history a lot better than I do. Um, but if I remember correctly, it was early 2000s. There was a, a sort of an annexation swap. Uh, with property on base settlement and then this area out here um, and as i had alluded to before i think the goal at the time david you correct me was uh first get the owners out here decide what they wanted to do with it get them all together came up with the land use plan try to get a catalyst project that can create enough increment to fund infrastructure um, and then continue on um, and I did had, did mention that we did look at that last year. So I've been with the city about three years. Uh, we did look at that last year. And actually, it was probably about six months prior to that for us all internally talking, saying, hey, we need to get these owners together. Um, we need to look at that land use so that things aren't moving. Uh, several property owners call us very regularly, large property owners out there just going, hey, what's going on? Are you marketing our property? We do market the property. We market our own. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of factors going in there. Some is land price, some is the lack of utility, that's a chicken and egg situation. Um, you know, some of some of the developments went south of the city and you know, Bellevue here. Um, everybody has commercial areas, everybody has industrial areas, um, everybody has new or newer, I guess newer now access point, um, and some come at me. So uh, yeah, so when we realized that this may need to change, big box is not, that was the goal at that time, I believe. We're going to get targets and Chopko's and Walmart's and uh, then. Right. Well, and at that, at that time, at that time, 2005, I mean, it was. I mean, subdivisions were going crazy. People were building everywhere. Um, school. <laughs> correct, right? Um, so yeah, and it, it was unfortunate that that meeting was not well attended and kind of broke down into a different discussion. We do plan to have that again, more jointly with uh, the town. Um, and you know, try to hash it out again. The goal being to change or address the entire area may not change. I mean, in reality, if we go to the owners and they say, no, we want a commercial, I mean, I, I highly doubt that the city council is gonna change. And it's still put it's unlikely. Um, and we, we have shared with them. So we did a the city did a, a commercial and industrial market study last year. Um, and it does show non what do you want to say non service egg land um, is typically going from about 35,000 to 48,000 an acre. Um, oh no, excuse me, that's service. Uh, non-service we we can we have we don't get a lot of the non-service being purchased and developed. Uh, the city didn't do the study itself. We hired uh, NEI separately, which is a private um, commercial and industrial real estate company out of I don't know where they're out of the office we use for Appleton. Um, so they conducted the study. We used a private group. We didn't use a planning service. We didn't use an engineering firm. We used an actual uh, commercial marketing. And, and real estate company. Um, and that is on our website. And you can take a look at it. It's actually very interesting. It breaks down all different land uses, office, and in light of the pandemic, we did it during the pandemic. Um, so um, I guess um, that's kind of where we are today. Um, but I, 
I am still hopeful. So my school of planning was always regional planning. Both urban is a hot topic, regional and, and urbanism. Um, so I'm still incredibly hopeful that working together, we can, we can get the land use going out here, get the utilities out here, and, and get it developed. And there's nobody that would like to tax base more than the city. So, um, so it's not like that we that we make recommendations that that are going to go against what those adopted plans are. And I don't know if you want to add anything. Kind of. Wraps it up, but just going back to that original picture, when we, when we got into our um, boundary agreement, the reason it's a boundary agreement and not a negotiation is because it came to an agreement. Um, from a municipal standpoint, that, that infamous uh, Middle East Side High School was always in the back of everyone's mind. We didn't have to call the sewage districts and support the new water. He said, we can bring you a Green Bay Water said we can bring water. And like everyone at the time was optimistic that okay, it's possible. And now we've got this really huge crop piece of land to plug it, plug it in and it grow. Right? Well, that didn't work out. But now moving forward, I think there is there is a need to hit that reset button because we didn't put I think there was a lot of valuable time into community neighborhood, but not just not just planning and processing. Um, some of the we you know things change like with the school district contract that is nowhere in the on the front burner at this point. Some of the things that we've learned with like what we're talking about various needs, difficulties with the Florida water. that we have, looking at a different market than we had. Um, there is a need in the future. I don't think our planning side, our process wasn't up. It's just that we have to keep up on it and just make sure that it's a 21st century plan, um, not whatever century that was made up. <laughs> we have no idea. The only thing I would add is uh, the other thing when this was Remo's farm, I mean, the town and the, the city were for kind of a little adversarial, and, and the intent was this group was formed so we could work together and our zoning would fit between the two municipalities. And, you know, in, in this commission, it's had three city members, three town members. We've all gotten along really well and tried to take everybody's interest into account so that we have a nice blend of development here. So, and that's why during my comments, I was coming from a whole planner's are in agreement. Well, that's important because that was one of the things we're trying to strive for is to work together for good land use and land development. But I do think it's time to reevaluate just because nothing has happened and, and, and the demands have changed. I mean, we've all seen business office, not near what it was, commercial big box, not near what it was. But we are seeing a lot of, I mean, it's probably a lot of industrial, a lot of residential, huge industrial. But, that's a whole other story. <laughs> and a lot more multi than the FCC, too. Yeah. It's shocking. Yes. In, you know, 20 years ago, uh, people were afraid of condominiums. Now they're going to be more equal than definitely coverage. That's a, a function of uh, some of this baby boom that's getting a little older and older. <laughs> well, and I, think it, I think it's also the result of some getting through and being built and people realizing, wait a second, it's not two condos stuck together and you've got the same type of bubble. But yes it is. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else on that? Do any commissioner members have any questions for the planners or anything on that for the discussion? All right, do we have anything else we need to talk about tonight? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? <laughs> All right. All right, thanks everybody. And again, thanks Seth and Joe for attending. We appreciate it. Uh, so all those in favor of closing, say yeah, I do. Aye. 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 All right, we're done. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too.
Yeah, because I was I was leaning against it initially that way. Yeah, this is not an easy decision. It's 